Stop by your shirt. As good as I can be right now. How old are you now? 26. 26. Yeah. And uh, when did you arrive here? About a little over two years ago. Two years. Do January. You know January 26, I think. 2006. 2006. I, I know that we got a letter from you, and we got a letter from your father. Right. And. Uh, that's why we're here, obviously. Right. Yeah, I appreciate your reaching out to us. And, uh, we felt, you know, that it was an opportunity for you to tell your story and what happened. Right. So we appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for, you know, coming forward to help me get it out because, you know, it seems like a lot of people don't know the truth, don't know the facts beyond what they were told, and. I'm here to set everything out, you know, so everybody knows. Have you been reaching out, sending out letters, and asking for people to pay attention to your case? Is that From time to time, you know, but uh, recently with the appeal being denied by the state appellate court, I figured, you know, I figured originally, I figured maybe they're going to see what happened and everything, but they denied it, so I figured I had to get to the public so the public knew. And, you know, they can decide for themselves based on knowing more information. What did you bring with you? This, this is a portion of my legal work, just in case if you want to see photographs or different things that could help explain certain aspects that were Photographs that were taken by whom? Um, the police, oh, like they crime scene and stuff like that. Scene? Yes. Okay. And there's certain things like missed evidence and stuff that wasn't, that was clearly obvious and they didn't even collect it, stuff that could have exonerated myself and provided more leads for the police as to who committed this crime. The bottom line is that you were convicted of murder. Right. But you maintain still to this day that you did not yes, kill sir. Tim Bray. Yes, sir. Who killed Tim Bray then? I don't know. I don't know his past. I don't know. He was from White Plains. I don't know what happened to him and who he dealt with down there. But, you know, I mean, they went at the police went after me because I was the ex boyfriend of Miss Domery, and they just assumed that I had, me and, and me and him, we had a few arguments over the phone. It was two or three. Nothing even serious. We had one confrontation in which we got in a shoving match, but that was all. But he lied to the, his friends, people he came in contact with, saying I was harassing him and doing all these things, and which were completely false. And my phone records proved that. Now, I don't have my phone records because my attorneys never sent me copies. They originally had them which proves this stuff, which the district attorney's office had, which the Bethlehem police by all rights should have had. None of this was made public. None of this was brought out in the trial. My own lawyers never introduced the information. And so from then on, especially during the trial, there was this assumption that I was doing all these things when it was never occurring. I wish I had my phone records to, to show you, but Kinlan and Shanks has not given me them after I repeatedly asked them for the past two years, like periodically, every couple months or so, I've been writing to them, asking them for additional Did do information. You, were the phone records part of the trial record? No, because my lawyers never introduced them. Well, why, and why would that be important, do you think, to exonerate you? Well, I wouldn't say it would exonerate me, but it was proof that I wasn't harassing him. Like, you know, they, they started from a certain point and said, okay, he, this guy's harassing him, and it leads to so on, but that was never true. And not only that, but the district attorney, David Rossi, or assistant district attorney, presented this information to the jury, presenting knowingly false information to the jury, and, and, he, and he got away with it because my own lawyer, I blame my own lawyers for that. And, I mean... 
you know, I, I can't, I still to this day, and, and my family and others who know, they, they don't understand why they wouldn't have done that. I mean, that's just one aspect of what, you know, I have a um, crime scene photograph of a cigarette butt that was at the scene of the crime that's clearly visible in crime scene photographs. If you can see, there's a cigarette right. butt sitting we'll there. We'll take pictures of that later, but right. I want to talk to you about that day in court when the verdict came down. Okay. Can you tell me about that, what that was like, and what you remember? Um, it's almost like I blocked a lot of it out because it was so devastating, but... Uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't sure what it was going to be because I, I felt that my lawyers missed a lot of stuff and I was just hoping that you know the people the jurors and, 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 and all the spectators people in the crowd would have you know who had been there for the duration would have pieced together even through the trial I mean you could tell the Bethlehem police were lying about quite a basically everything. You know, it, it, to me, you know, but evidently they didn't. But I mean, like, I had I heard from people that jurors, some jurors were crying, and 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 it just didn't display the type of behavior that you think you would generally think somebody would have for convicting a person of murder and you know basically sending them to prison for 25 years or something like that, and. I mean, yeah. But you remember sitting there in the court, and right, the, yes. the foreman reads out the verdict of the judge that you were guilty. Right. Yeah, I remember that, and like, disbelief, and it was like surreal. Like you know, it's almost hard to imagine even just being in that situation. I mean. You know, your heart's pounding and all that stuff, and, you know, it's like, I don't know. they took you away. Yeah, they rushed me out the back of the courtroom, and which I didn't like. I would have rather have gone out the front. I would have rather have seen video cameras and everything because, you know, I would like the people to see, you know, and I would have liked to have said something at least, you know, but that's Albany County for you. Well...